In part A of this question, we are asked to solve a pair of simultaneous equations where the unknowns occur within indices. In part B of this question, we are asked to solve an equation where the unknown x is contained within expressions containing logarithms. This question will clearly require a knowledge of the laws of indices and logarithms. We will begin with the basic definition of a logarithm. The expression y equals a to the x may be written in logarithm language as log base a of y is equal to x. We should note that here a needs to be positive. The three laws of indices are shown. Notice that these are used extensively in simplifying expressions involving indices and that these require the use of the same base number shown here as a. And inherited from these rules we have the three laws of logarithms which are also shown. It is important that you are familiar with the use of all of these rules. We will next consider part A of the question. In the first equation, we are given 3 to the power 3x multiplied by 9 to the power of y is equal to 27. In order to simplify the left-hand side of this equation, we would need to have a common base number. We can achieve this as 3, 9 and 27 can all be expressed as powers of 3. And this is shown. Now, replacing the 3, 9, and 27 in the first equation, we can rewrite the equation as illustrated. And we can next simplify this using the laws of indices. Since we now have the two powers of 3 are equal to each other, it follows that the two individual powers must be equal to each other. And so we have the equation, which I have labelled as equation 1. We next proceed with the second given equation, noting that 2 equals 2 to the 1, 8 equals 2 cubed, and 64 is 2 to the power of 6. And so 1 over 64 is 1 over 2 to the power of 6, or 2 to the power minus 6. We next proceed to express the second equation using powers of 2, and then simplify in using the laws of indices. Which simplifies to give us 2 to the power of minus 3x minus 3y must equal 2 to the power minus 6, as shown. And now comparing the powers of 2, we have the equation minus 3x minus 3y equals minus 6, which we can divide by minus 3 for convenience to get x plus y equals 2, which I had labelled as equation 2. It now only remains to solve equation 1 and equation 2 as a pair of simultaneous equations. And the result of this pair of simultaneous equations is x equals minus 1 and y equals 3 as shown. We will next consider part b of this question. We can begin the solution of this question by simplifying the left hand side of the equation using the laws of logarithms. Firstly, we notice that 2 log of x is the same as log of x squared. And using the addition and subtraction laws of logarithms, we can simplify the left-hand side further. Now, since we have that both of these logarithms are equal, it follows that the functions within each logarithm must be equal. And this has now reduced the equation to being a quadratic equation. We will start to simplify this by multiplying through by x minus 1, and then expanding the brackets gives us the equation shown, which on simplification becomes 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, 
which we can then solve by factorising as shown. And this produces two potential results in x is a minus a half and x equals two. However, since the original equation has to contain log of x and log of x minus one, x equals minus a half is not a valid solution. And so we choose the solution that x equals two. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this solution. And thank you for listening. This question has been dealing with logs. So I'm going to look at a related matter regarding logs, which is differentiating log of x. And this is something that comes up in A2. And essentially, you're told what the derivative of log x is. And that's log meaning ln of x, so the natural log of x. And from that, we can differentiate other logs. But what we don't do, and this is not covered in A level or further maths A level, is differentiate log from first principles. Now, there's lots of other functions that you do have to be able to differentiate from first principles. Already in AS maths, you've done powers of x up to 3. And one of the other videos in this series, question 8 of this paper, in fact, looks at differentiating powers of x greater than 3 from first principles. And in A2, you have to be able to differentiate sine and cos from first principles. So you can see a log curve, uh, the natural log of x, in fact, on the screen there. And if we wanted to differentiate, we first have to do f of x plus delta x, take away f of x, all divided by delta x. So that looks like this in this case. So we have the limit as delta x tends to naught, log of x plus delta x, take away log x over delta x. And using the log laws, we can combine the two terms on the top because log a minus log b is log a over b. So that looks like this. The next thing we can do is that we can tidy up the top of that to turn it into 1 plus delta x over x. So that's just a little bit of algebra. And then we take the divided by delta x out as a fraction here. And then we use another log rule, which is that n log x is log x to the n. And so this 1 over delta x becomes a power. OK, now at that point, there is further algebraic jiggery-pokery has to go on. And I'm not going to go into that. Instead, we're going to have a look at it uh, graphically. So if we put a point on this log curve, and then we put a point to represent what the gradient is at that point, so we'll put the gradient line on. There it is. And if we put this point up here, that's telling us what the gradient is. So it's quite, quite a steep gradient at that point. And then if we put a trace on here, which it is already on, then if we move this point along the log curve, we can see what happens to the gradient. And if you haven't seen this before, or you haven't come across the what we get when we differentiate log, you may nonetheless recognize that curve. Anyway, we'll now go back to thinking about this. And what we're going to do is remove all the other stuff. So we'll get rid of these things. So we're now going to put a slider in for delta x. We'll start off with delta x as 1. Now, remember, when you're differentiating from first principles, actually, the delta x is tending to 0. So we t 
tend to be thinking of very small numbers. But we're going to slide it back down to zero in a moment. And this is the function 1 plus delta x over x log of 1 plus delta x over x to the power of 1 over delta x with delta x equal to 1. So it's actually just the log of 1 plus 1 over x. What we can now do is take the slider down and see what happens to that green line. And you can see it's moving very slowly. Whoops, if you go to north it doesn't work. And you may be able to see that that's gone from being not symmetrical. So here it's very close to 0 at 3, but here it isn't. As we go down, it becomes more and more symmetrical. Now, in fact, if you've recognized that, then you'll see that it looks very much like 1 over x. At 2 we're about a half, at 3 we're about a third, at 4 we're about a quarter. So if we put the curve 1 over x in there, then it looks very like that. And remember, it won't quite be because we would have to let this go to 0. So we find that when we differentiate log x we get 1 over x. Now, that isn't quite a finished proof of it. You don't need to know that for A level, but it's nice to be able to see that this idea of f of x plus delta x take away f of x divided by delta x with delta x going to zero does work okay for more weird functions. I will mention here, perhaps should have mentioned earlier, you may have learnt this with h instead of delta x, but it comes to the same thing.